What is the best Bitcoin investment strategy that generates the most profits for us all? To answer this question, I'm gonna share the story of three investors, Jerry who buys lump sum, George who day trades, and Elaine who dollar cost averages. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the pros and cons of each approach and share some cold hard numbers about how each one performs so we can determine who wins at the end of the day. And if you wanna become a savvier investor, then this video is for you, strap in my friend, and let's dive right in. At the end of the day, we're all here because we want to make money. I mean, sure, I like the technology and I believe in a decentralized future, but let's not lose sight of our financial goals too. That's why it's super important to make sure our investing strategy is optimal and backed by data too. Because the unfortunate reality is that most people enter the crypto world when we're near all time highs and they have serious FOMO. That's a huge problem because if they just randomly invest and don't think through their strategy, they're gonna lose a lot of money and just leave crypto forever. We don't want that to happen because we need every single person to join and stay in order to reach mass adoption faster. Fortunately, we got our good friends, Jerry, George, and Elaine with us to learn from them and take a look at how much money they each put in, what their returns are during a bear market and a bull market, and the biggest question of them all, who wins the title of best investor and takes home the bragging rights? All right, first let's meet Jerry. He's who we call the lump sum investor. He discovers Bitcoin when his old buddy Kramer tells him, hey bro, you gotta buy some Bitcoin. I invested and made bank so far. So Jerry goes and watches some YouTube videos about Bitcoin. He discovers Michael Saylor, Pomp, and a bunch of other moon boys. He drinks the Kool-Aid hard and decides to sell all of his stocks and go all in. He smashes 20 grand into Bitcoin at the time. That's why we call it lump sum, right? You're entering all at once with a single trade. Now, the problem here is that most likely Jerry is entering late in the cycle because that's when prices are high, things are exciting, and people like his buddy Kramer look like geniuses. But then the bear market inevitably comes and Jerry is faithfully holding, but he starts to worry when he sees his portfolio fall more and more every day. His initial 20K balance is now under 10K and all the FUD articles start to really scare him. He constantly bugs Kramer. He's like, dude, what's going on? When is it gonna go back up? Now George, on the other hand, he's the day trader of the group. He comes in around the same time as Jerry, but he gets bored real soon just buying and holding. He quickly gets the itch to do more and have a little fun. He discovers the world of technical analysis and chart trading and he thinks to himself like, hey, I can draw lines too, let's do this. He makes a bit of profits at first, but then the market starts to turn and he goes on a losing streak. He gets real frustrated when he can't seem to turn it around no matter what he tries, so he ends up quitting with a total loss of around 30%. I mean, look, it's not that trading is bad, but the cold hard truth is that most people lose money when trading. I've seen some statistics say that 70 to 90% of active traders lose money. That's not surprising to me because most people do it in a very amateur, shoot from the hip manner. They don't take it seriously like the professionals who track every trade, question their biases, and properly risk manage. Those are the people who treat it like a full-time job and that's honestly the only way you can make it as a trader. Last but not least, Elaine. She enters a little later than Jerry and George, but she stumbles upon an article that tells her about the benefits of dollar cost averaging, which really jibes with her more conservative style. That's basically where you buy Bitcoin periodically with a fixed amount of money. In Elaine's case, she sets aside $100 every week from her paycheck to buy Bitcoin. Because the price of Bitcoin changes constantly, the amount of BTC that she gets with each purchase changes as well, even though she's spending the same $100. There's really not much more to it, right? Even though she starts buying when prices are high, as prices drop, she's not worried. She sticks to her plan. And she's actually happy because her cost basis or the average price that her Bitcoin is purchased at is getting lower and lower, which means that now she can buy more BTC at a lower price. The only thing she has to worry about is keeping her discipline, having enough cash to sustain her plan, and not getting the itch to mess with it. Oh, and she also needs to find a good service to use that doesn't charge her too much in fees. Okay, so now that we've met Jerry, George, and Elaine, it's time for the fun stuff. Let's compare their performance for a couple of different scenarios, right? Bear market, bull market, and so forth. 
to see who wins. First off, George quits trading after his losing streak, so I'm just gonna disqualify him right here and not consider him. He did turn his unrealized losses into realized ones after all. If you wanna read the stats about how most traders lose money, I'll leave this article for you down below. It has citations to some research reports as well that you can check out further. So in our case, we're just gonna compare Jerry and Elaine, the two hodlers. All right, so to compare their performance, I have to get my hands on Bitcoin's price data. And at first I planned on using Google Sheets and somehow use a formula to grab Bitcoin's price on any particular day. That way I can calculate it myself. Turns out you can do that, but it's a huge hassle. I have to sign up for an API key and then pay money to use some service. And I was like, nah, hard pass. But then I had a stroke of luck. I stumbled onto these dollar cost averaging calculators for Bitcoin, like this one right here, or this one that I found when I was Googling for the data I needed. This is exactly what I was looking for because it lets you set the buy amount, how often to buy, when to start, when to end, and you can see all the detailed performance of this dollar cost averaging strategy. Now, finally, I had all the data needed to evaluate Elaine's DCA strategy. Now, Jerry is easy, right? He smashes it all in instead of spreading it out. So I can just calculate the amount of BTC he bought and then multiply by Bitcoin's price at any day to see what his portfolio is worth. And when we're comparing their performances, there's a few scenarios I wanna focus on. First is if they both start at the best time AKA the lowest point in the previous bear market. For the reasons I said earlier, this is super duper unlikely, but we can take a look anyways. The second case is if they both start at the worst time, AKA near the peak of the bull market, which is quite normal if you think about it, right? And then we'll take a look at how much your portfolio is worth at various points in the subsequent years. So boom, here is a chart I made for you of all the results. This is so beautiful, right? I can stare at it all day. And I'm gonna leave the link down for you below if you wanna play around with this Google Sheet as well. But let's run through this first, okay? So in the top section, this is if they are both super lucky and they enter at the bottom of the previous bear market, like in 2015. In that case, of course, Jerry's gonna win by smashing it all in lump sum. So at the peak of the following bull market, he has over 8,000% gains, whereas Elaine still does pretty well, has over 3,500% gains. And then in the following bear market, Jerry is still up quite a bit, 1,400% and Elaine 400%. But this is where I wanna focus on, right? This bottom section, the more normal situation when they enter in the bull market, right? That's when I entered too. And so of course, Jerry goes all in and he's gonna do a lot worse, but in the deep bear market at the lowest point, he's down almost 83% whereas Elaine is only down 55%. But in between the bear market and bull markets in the consolidation phase, this is where Elaine's DCA strategy shines. Because look, she's up 40% already with 18 months of HODL. Whereas Jerry is still down, down less of course, but still down 54%. And then now in our recent peak of the bull market, 40 months HODL, Jerry's up 200 plus percent but Elaine is up 600 plus percent. What does this tell me? This tells me that Elaine is the clear winner. Now, two pro tips for you. First, I only recommend doing this with Big Daddy Bitcoin. Look, I'm not a maximalist at all. I own plenty of altcoins, but the fact is that most alts bleed value versus Bitcoin on the long run, even though during alt season, they gain way more. Willy Woo did a pretty illuminating study on this that you can take a further look at, and I'll leave a link for you down below. But basically, it convinced me that this DCA strategy mainly works with Bitcoin. I mean, we are talking about a general purpose investment strategy after all. My second tip is to use Swan Bitcoin if you're in the United States. I've been using it for quite a while now to DCA and I'm a huge fan. They have low fees, it's super simple to use. I mean, it's literally only focused on DCA, nothing else. I actually have a partner link that gives you a sign up bonus. So you should check that out down below if you'd like. So are you convinced by the results? Will you start dollar cost averaging if you haven't already? Also, just for fun, who are you most like, Jerry, George, or Elaine? Be sure to watch this video where I review Swan Bitcoin and show you how it works. And why not subscribe as well to catch my future videos? I'm Kevin from BFB. I can't wait to see you on the next one and cheers.